avenge for the righteous, else he will put his hand in wickedness. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Wherever you're tuning into this channel, one verse on YouTube, I want to welcome you to week 18. I am very excited this day that God has brought onto our way another noble character that I want to discuss in the order of our patriots according to what I call Faith All of Fame in the scripture. So for the past weeks we have been doing a reminder of the lives of our patriots that has pioneered one dimension or the other. And today, privileged enough, we'll be talking about the mother of many nations. Last week we talked about our husband, Abraham, the father of many nations. And today, as the Lord will have it, We'll be talking about Genesis chapter 17, verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Come by our hearts in prayer. Father, we thank you, we exhort you. Ancient of days, you are supreme in all your dealings and I am grateful and thankful to you that you grant me this privilege to share with my brethren this hallowed word of yours and Lord I know that where the word of the king is there is power I can sense the power of God even in this vicinity even as anyone watching this video right now I speak that the power that changed men from non-entity to celebrity, let that power be activated. The same power that resurrected Jesus from the grave, let that power be activated. That Lord, all our heroes, all our faults, all our circumstances, all our challenge, all our stagnancy today by the reason of this power that is made available today let everything come to an end just like as it was said concerning our mother Sarah that what seems impossible in the eyes of men according to biology to God it becomes a miracle thank you for this spectacular miracle you are doing right now in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is another opportunity again that the Lord has given us for us to glean through the scripture. Remember the word of the Lord says that the entrance of the word giveth light. And I want to plead with you. This series, you know, life of people are evidences for us to emulate and have faith in this profession we call Christianity. You know, Jude writing to the brethren said, I write to you that ye may contend for your faith. But eventually, today is the first time you are coming across our video, one verse video. We've made a disclaimer that we will not be quoting so many scriptures that will keep it one verse. So today we'll be talking about Genesis chapter 17, verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, Thou shalt not call a name Sarai, but Sarah will a name be. You see, this is a stunning testimony. And today we'll be learning from the life of our mother, Sarah. Remember the Bible said, You women, you should have learned from your mother, Sarah. Today, by the grace of God, we'll be talking about some things that we should learn from her and it's 
a lesson that we all need to pay attention to. And so I plead with you, stick with us till the end, and God will bless you. What was it about Sarah? You know, like the Bible will say that the angels were wondering, what is it about man that you are so mindful of? That God is so mindful of her, that God will change her name to be mother of many nations. Sarai wasn't a bad name. I mean, the original meaning of Sarai is princess. And princess wasn't a bad name. But because of the purpose of God in our life, like I stated in our last video, that names are not just given spiritual in spiritual realms for just nomenclature, but names depict what capabilities God had endowed every individual. So our name should be able to reflect the kind of person and the kind of dimensions we'll be able to walk in. Our name should be able to reflect what God has in mind before creating us. So I also stated that when you have an encounter with God, but eventually your parents, you know, mistakenly give you a name that doesn't reflect the agenda God has for you, God will definitely change your name. We saw that in the life of Jacob. We saw it in the life of Apostle Paul. He was called Saul. So, when you have an encounter with God, God will definitely, you know, restructure your name to reflect the purposes He has for you. Remember, He is a God that declares the end from the beginning. Our parents might be fascinated with, I mean, the situation surrounding your, your birth and like, give you a name, like in the case of Jabez, because she passed through so much pains and sorrow, she have to call her son Jabez. And you wouldn't want to hear <laughs> my own family story because my, the names of my siblings are very, very wonderful. Sometimes I imagine what my dad was, I mean, must be thinking before you give them all these names. But I just give glory to God that I was just unique among them. And I have my name being figured out to be Andrew Fineboy. And fortunately, I am the only one that does not have native name. What am I saying, brethren? God encountered Abraham and by extension to his wife because she is a participator of that promise that God has already promised his servant Abraham and name was changed to be Sarah. Okay, like the question I asked, what was the big deal about Sarah? Researching this verse and looking into the scripture, what the Bible has said about Sarah, I come to understand that Sarah was just an extraordinary human being. Why do I make this statement? God called her noble woman. God called her mother of many nations. This woman, oh my God, Kali anda salakondo di vrado selekondo di ada karanda saleko baradia. Look at what we are facing these days in our generation. Divorce is one of the greatest millions that the devil is capitalizing on to deal with humankind. Because when a family is not in unity, the devil can creep in and rain havoc, and that will transmit to societies. So many society vices that we are having as a result of broken homes. But look at this lady, Sarah. Number one, I said she was the incubator of the greatness of Abraham. Why do I make that statement? Look at the journey of Abraham. God promised him that I'm going to make you father of many nations. If not for Sarah, if not for our understanding, if Sarah would have been our modern day civilized ladies, that promise wouldn't have been fulfilled. Why do I make that assumption? Look at my claim here. Visiting American prison 
you will understand that so many men were incarcerated because of women. Because they don't want anybody to insult someone they love. They don't want anybody to, you know, to place a finger on the lady they have come to love. And because of that, the revenge retaliated and it landed them in prison. But every chance that Abraham had, Abraham will give out Sarah. Not that she, she heard it as a gossip. He even planned with her. Please help me to, you know, convince Pharaoh that you are my sister, that you are not my wife, so that my life will be spared. Instead of standing up like a typical average black American, you know, will stand up for his lady, Abraham will give her out. Not once, twice. So I call that the mother that incubated the greatness of Abraham. What if God did not intervene and she ended up getting married to those kings? The promise wouldn't have been fulfilled. The father Abraham were according to the wouldn't have said it. But this lady was able to stand and cover up the weakness of her husband. A man of God once shared the story how um, husband and wife traveled to one of these western countries and getting there they were like, oh this place is cool. We might want to continue our life here. And the only option available for them was, okay, one of us should get married to the citizen of the place and got our paper and we'll divorce. And the wife said, no, I know you, you are a man that has never, you know, stick to what you said. Let me do it. Let me go. I mean, I will divorce and later come up to marry you. And both of them agreed. And guess what? As the man of God shared the story, just as simple as she slept with the man, wake up in the morning and say, good morning, sir. And the man was like, what did you just say? She said, good morning. He said, my wife that we are now divorced has never one day greeted me good morning. He said, I will do anything to keep you as a wife. And today she's the wife of that man. Marriage has been destroyed. But in the case of Abraham and Sarai, God intervened. And that's why I tell people, this thing that you are thinking, oh, every other person have done it, you can do it. Have you also confirmed that you have the kind of grace that the person has? Because God cannot be questioned. He said, I show mercy to whom I want to show mercy to. Look at the story I just shared. But Abraham, in his own case, God intervened. And this, they were believers too. These brethren today, they were no longer husband and wife. The wife is enjoying a newfound husband. Sarah stood on her ground and covered up the weaknesses of her husband. No wonder God gave her the name mother of many nations, a noble woman. What can we learn from Sarah? Sarah as a virtuous woman, she was never selfish. She knew that God has promised them that they will have a child. But as a human, looking at our natural situation, that she is beyond the order of women, that she can no longer bring forth a child. She wasn't selfish to say, no, my husband, she said, go into my maid, but I pray your God to have mercy upon us and bring forth a child that will be heir to our inheritance. She was never selfish. How many of the ladies we have out there that will be able to do that? Remember, it backfired and she realized her mistake. But will you be able to cover up your husband? Will you be able to work with your husband to fulfill the promises he has received from God. Sarah was called a mother. And I pray for you today, Paraventure, 
you are hearing the sound of my voice, you are watching this video, I ask that I have grace to truly pass through the fire and become a virtuous woman to rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. These stories, we are not just palatable stories. These situations, we are not just palatable situations because right now, what we normally do is that we question God, why me? Why me? I'm also guilty of this. Because Bible said, open the fire, make the heart sick. Brethren, these are verses that have been part of us and I want to still re-emphasize that <laughs> because of one verse, we will not be quoting the scriptures. But of course, let me give you a clue. You can just Google this sentence and you will see these verses. Hope the fair, make the heart sick. As a matter of fact, the psalmist prayed. He said, please, avenge for the righteous, else he will put his hand in wickedness. We are all human. So when people are called patriot, it is because what happened to ordinary human beings, they were able to suck it up and move on and stay and patiently and obtain the promises from God. She wasn't selfish. She was ready to do anything in her human power to make sure they have the promises of God. But of course, you know the scripture says, my ways are not your ways. As a matter of fact, the wise king put it this way. He said, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof leads to destruction. Yes, people accuse Sarah today that the, the, the crisis Christians were having, the persecution Christians were having was as a result of a suggestion. But brethren, can you step back and look the motive behind what she did? She wasn't selfish. She being human being was trying, you know, to secure the promises of God. She looked after her own. Why do God give her mother of many nations? She exhibited that quality. She exhibited that characteristics that as a virtuous woman, you are not meant to be selfish. Remember one of the accolades the Bible gave us. He said, your mother Sarah called her husband Lord. Today we are talking about um, equality and equality. See, there are ordinances that God has kept. I always tell people, I always share with friends, that no right thinking human being will, after some times, will not come back to his senses and, have, and acknowledge what another fellow human being which happens to be his partner, have suffered for him or for her. I was privileged in my early days in the United States to visit a young family that was having so much crisis. Then I wasn't married. My friend and I, we visited his family and there was so much going on. Our friend, the husband, was under so much pressure to provide for the family. And of course, if you know a typical Nigerian man who wants his wife to take care of his children while he faints for the family, at least for them to grow up before, you know, they, both of them should be working. And the pressure was so much on him. He was working and, it's, and at the same time he was schooling. And there was so much abuse in the marriage and there about, to the point that they are not of the Christian faith, to the point that even the leader of their faith has already advised them to call it a quit. So that was let them go their separate ways so that nobody would die. Some parents that were involved have already advised them, see, this, both of you are not meant to be together. I remember my friend, you know, advising the lady said, I don't know what to tell you. Your husband is my friend. But I can't watch my sister go through what you are going through. So please figure out what you can do for yourself. I don't know what to say. I am biased in this issue. And I did look at this lady and I told her, I know I am not married. I know you are not of the same faith with me. I'm a Christian. 
and God ate thy words. I want to tell you that look into your heart because what makes you a unique wife is the amount of nonsense you can tolerate that any other woman cannot tolerate. That was the only thing that made you unique. Every other woman will look at this, what is going on, and they will call it a quit. But what more can you take? I am not an advocate of abuse in marriage. But look into your heart. Brethren, you are truly those couples today, their challenges yesterday has become their testimony. They are doing perfectly fine. Of course, you know, when somebody is carrying so many scares, once upon a time, you will look back and you feel like, does this thing worth it? But I pray earnestly every day for them. Because when we, I mean, when I came into this country, they were one of the first family that I was exposed to and we are like brothers and sisters. We hang out a lot. Of course, now, um, children is involved, so everybody's, you know, people will say, <laughs> taking care of your business. But my heart went out for her. And I gave her this piece of advice. Of course, if you know me, I call most of my friends, wife, first lady. And one day I call one first lady, and she was like, this one you're calling me first lady? Um, is there something I need to know? Is there no second lady that you're calling first lady? I say, if there is a second lady, <laughs> that means you are privileged to be a first lady, so you should rejoice. Of course, if you know me before now, they said I have bad mouth so much. <laughs> so <laughs> I try to answer you so that you will not ask me any question anyway. But because that's what I think, we all have. That your wife become your first lady. But that was not the case of Sarah and Abraham. But this lady stood on her ground. And she tolerates all the nonsense, all the weakness of her husband. If it were today, everybody will advise them to call that a quit. And you will not blame them for advising them. You know why? Because so many have sticked into marriages like that and lost their life. How can, what kind of a man that will always give out his wife to save his life? It doesn't make sense. But you see, when God is involved, and that is why it is not advisable that you pattern your marriage according to somebody's, somebody else's family. Because you don't know the kind of grace the person may have. But Sarah, up to tomorrow, we will still call her mother of many nations because she was heaven in the midst of all these circumstances stand and build our family brethren this is a lesson for us paraventure your family is going through hell paraventure your family is suffering from what you never negotiated for. Can you turn to God? Who shows mercy to whom you want to show mercy to? To give you grace to carry on. Brethren, I implore you to look onto the life of our mother and see how God enabled her that in midst of childlessness, she was able to endure till she obtained the promise. Because one thing about divorce is that you never know what God has in stock for the family. And both of you just broke up and God's plan for that family no longer hold again. And that does not mean that I'm talking down on as many that have experienced divorce or not. Like I said, not by our power, not by our mind, but by the Spirit of God. Can you tap into that grace today? That Lord, you will give me the grace to continue. We have stood before the altar and have professed our love to each other. Grant us the grace to exalt your name. Because a family is the first place where 
children are meant to be nurtured to become a better human being in the society. And I pray for you this day that God will enable you. Paraventure, you are going through difficulties. One of the most difficult situations that young couples go through is the absence of an offspring. I pray this day that because it is written that none shall be buried in the word of God. Today, that situation turns around to be your testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever your family is going through, I ask that the power of God will come upon you. Thank you, Abba Father, because you will do more than I ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, I believe so much that as God has brought this word to us, paraventure you identify with the difficulties that Sarah, our mother, went through. As God gave her a promise, no matter how delayed it was, yours is activated right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Until I come your way again, remember, Monday 3 p.m., it's our premiere. God bless you. My name remains Andrew Feinborn. Shalom.